Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here, and I came across a situation where I needed Directory Opus's rename power. And you know, normally when I make these videos, I don't have a purpose in mind other than to show you a feature, but I'm not really trying to solve a problem. So I have to stage my own version of the problem or the setup so that you could see it. In this case, I went to Goodwill this weekend. I bought a whole slew of 99 cent CDs, best value ever. And I used a tool called Easy CD Audio Converter, my favorite tool. It's not free, but you know, I like it. I like it a lot and I trust it. So uh, the last time I reinstalled this, I had forgotten to change my file name layout. So I wasn't gonna get everything laid out the way that I wanted to when the files were named. So what I ended up with is I ended up with this. I ended up with a track number and a song title. I did actually end up getting a folder name. And so for some people, this works out. They know based on the folder, what album this came from. But that's if you're an album type collector. What if you're a singles person? So every single one of these suffers the same fate. So let's use the power of Directory Opus to help us out here. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put ourselves into flat view, and in this case, they call it mixed. And now I can see every folder's root files right here. So I can address them all at one time. And you can see that they all suffer from the same fate. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all, control A, and I will hit the rename button. So this is uh, Directory Opus's very, very powerful renaming tool. And we could spend uh, days. In fact, I think I actually have another video on renaming that may be a little more generic if you wanna check that out. So what we're really looking to do here is we're gonna sort of change the name of this. So because we're operating on more than one, we're gonna say that the old name is whatever or star, that's a wild card. So any single one of these, right? And what are we gonna name it to? and we're gonna ignore the file extension. Okay, so right now it says the old name's this and the new name's that, well, that's not gonna do. Clicking these three little boxes over here will reveal a whole bunch of metadata you can use. Now, fortunately, the software did tag the FLAC files with the appropriate music tags, making this relatively easy. So in my case, what I probably want is the artist, right? And you can see all of a sudden, all the artists are appearing down here, that's awesome. I'm gonna put a dash, I then want the album, album, yeah, it's looking good. And then I want the track number. I know this isn't, I mean, this probably offends somebody out there. Uh, track number. And then I want um, uh, the title, right? Obviously. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we got, if we scroll down here, Europe, the album name, the track number, and the song. Now it'd be nice if I could actually pad those numbers because, and you'll see why in a minute. Let's just go ahead and, and apply this. Okay, so now, there we go. For those of you who are anally inclined uh, this is the sort of analness that you want to be able to do. Now, I would really have liked to have had these padded. Uh, perhaps in another video, I'll show you a solution to that. Or I guess I could just show it to you now, right? So essentially, every single one of these, this is a common thing. A dash, a space, a single number, a space, and then another number. All right, so let's grab all of these just for fun. Go to rename. Now, what we're gonna do here is, we are going to use a, uh, a little regular expression action, all right? So we are going to match any set of characters. I can actually see my keyboard. A dash, a space, one single character, a dash, a space, and then another set of characters. And again, if I could type, it'd be easier. Okay. So essentially, um, or let's see, I think I actually, I think I got my Amiga stuff in here. There we go. All right, so now we have, what we have done is everything, so this represents one character surrounded by a space and dashes. Okay, that makes sense. And then I want every character before and after. Now by grouping these in parentheses, they become number values. 
So right now you can see that the rename's really not doing anything, but if I were to type slash backslash one, that represents the first set of parentheses. And that's fine, that we want that to be exactly the way it is. And then we want a space, a dash, a space, the number zero, the second value, which in this case would be one through nine, right? You follow me so far, we'll go over this again. And then after that, space, dash, space, and then of course, slash three. Okay, this probably confused some of you. Now you'll also notice down here that these ones did not get a, did not get changed. They don't match the situation. This matches a single character between those two dashes, right? That means it actually matches this hierarchy that we've put together here, this regular expression. So essentially what we've done is, so split it into three parts. The first part and the last part, or one through three, are gonna be the same. Now, if we really just wanted to not rename them at all, right? Nothing, nothing really matches because there's no action to be taken here. Just take one, two, and three, and then put them right back in the same file name. But what we're really looking for is a match of one single character between these dashes. Now, if you happen to have a song that's a one letter word, <laughs> you'll probably trash this or a band that has one letter word uh, for the name, the artist formerly known as A. <laughs> you could, you know, you probably have some problems here, but I'm pretty sure we're okay. All I really wanna do is pad this with a zero. And look at that, it's giving us exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and apply. Close. Now, now I've got things the way that I want. Artist album, perfectly set up track numbers and the name. And of course, it already has some of the other information, the other metadata, such as the cover is already in there. And that's it. So now I'm ready to move this over to my permanent storage now that I've ripped everything and uh, we're good to go. Listen, I hope you enjoyed this. I mean, I know everyone loves these directory opus videos. I promise I will do more of them. In the meantime, uh, I appreciate you watching. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. If you really like these videos, leave a comment. By the way, this should work on directory opus 12 and before as well. You don't have to have 13 just for this particular rename situation. All right, I'm Shane Armandrell. Thanks so much for watching and take care. We'll see you next time.